Welcome to The Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello, it's great to be with you. Today we are talking about the subject of toxic positivity, this belief that no matter how difficult the situation, that one should always maintain a positive mindset. So for instance, let's say we lose our job. A common response might be to have someone say, stay positive, or it could be worse, or hey, at least you have your health. And while those things may be true to a point, they don't address the feelings that tend to come with difficult situations, the anxiety, the stress, the fears. And ultimately what's been found is that emotions avoided tend to cause more harm than one might expect, which makes sense from a spiritual perspective. For instance, in this book, The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer, he mentions emotions not released tend to cause us to put up walls and to relive those emotions in ongoing ways throughout our lives, that those emotions store like energy in our bodies. They don't just disappear. And it would seem that people like the Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama would agree with Singer because in their book, The Book of Joy, we hear something similar, that the path to joy doesn't lead away from suffering and adversity, but through it. And so I was hoping that we could take some time to talk about this kind of stuff today. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing this up, Christina, because I agree with you that we tend to, in our culture or maybe our family of origins, label some emotions as good and some emotions as bad as opposed to just emotion. And so going back to your example of the lost job, it is a very appropriate emotion to feel discouraged, to feel frustrated, to maybe feel confused by it or you know, a little bit worried about what's going to be next for you. And I think when we try to avoid those and say, well, those are bad emotions I need to focus on. And even your point, like, okay, yes, you have your health. That has nothing to do with the situation at hand though. And so let's allow ourselves to name those emotions and to express them. And I really appreciate the analogy of, you know, our emotions being like a beach ball at the swimming pool. And if we ever try to submerge the beach ball under the surface and try to get it away from us, it continues to pop back up again. Just like you're talking about emotions are stored in our bodies and it's not like it's going anywhere. It, it continues to pop back up again and it becomes annoying at that point. Versus if you're in the pool and the beach ball's there, eventually the beach ball will kind of float off to the side of the pool naturally. If we just acknowledge, yep, there's a beach ball there and kind of let it do its thing, it can work its way out of the situation or maybe you want to engage with the beach ball in a particular way, and that's fine too. So I think it's really important that we are naming this and really addressing this toxic positivity because, again, I think we all enjoy positivity as opposed to negativity, if you will. But I think that we can reach a point where it becomes less than helpful and into toxic environments. Yeah, and I think what comes up for me, I grew up in a faith tradition. I wouldn't call it outright uh, prosperity gospel, but we sure flirted with prosperity gospel a lot. There's these expectations uh, that that the church, that uh, the people in your community had that you stay positive. And I remember one, one Sunday, a, a guy uh, was in church two days after his wife died. And I asked him sincerely, you know, as a, as a young person, how are you doing? And his response was, I'm blessed and filled with God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> no sadness, no no loss uh, with what's happening in your life. And it's like those emotions you can't talk about at church. And so I really uh, have enjoyed becoming part of faith traditions that allow you to explore those uh, more difficult, what people would label as difficult emotions. And I know that I, I've done music in church for a number of decades and you know one of the things that i run up against is i there there are not a lot of songs that that have language for sadness that have language for loss that have language you know the presbyterian hymnal is the one that has probably more songs that deal with grief and sadness than any other and and, and it's it only has 17 percent of songs of you know lament 
Whereas, you know, I think even, you know, other traditions have like 13% is the next highest. And so I think finding language for our emotions, finding language for sadness is, is huge for our culture because I feel like we don't really want to explore those types of things in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, I agree. I feel like if I ever expressed a negative emotion, it was chided. So I actually became very good at expressing positive emotions. This is, in, in many ways, this is new language to me to do the things we're talking about, to uh, acknowledge if I have a feeling. And I even realized not so long ago, you know, all these scriptures about do not fear, do not fear, they're a little bit different in terms of what they're addressing. If someone is going to move towards their calling and they're feeling a sense of fear, there's a sense of, yes, I feel the fear, but I'm moving towards it, which is different from this thing happened and I'm having an emotion about it. And so I even kind of realized recently, these verses don't, I'm not sure that they actually even apply. I don't know what you guys think about stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe in other words, it, it, if I'm hearing you, Christina, that sometimes we can feel stuck in our emotions and maybe the scriptures you're identifying um, move us towards whatever it is that we're fearing towards that thing as opposed to just feeling stuck, which I think is important to name as well. Um, I might add to that, I think, you know, one of the things I've appreciated about the prayer of examine, which I think we've shared on this podcast before, is it invites a person to reflect on their day, both the consolations, the ways in which they've experienced God or goodness or light or hope, as well as the desolations, where was there an absence of that? And I think when I first started that practice, it, it did feel a little foreign or like, oh, are we supposed to name the desolations? Like, aren't we just supposed to name the consolations to move us out of and, and to really focus on that, but really finding depth and a lot of times recognizing that in a moment in my day, there was both a consolation and a desolation in that same moment that somehow maybe I was feeling a, a, a dark, a darkness, a, a disappointment, whatever. And in that moment, there was something that happened that also drew me, drew me out. Like you're talking about Christina towards the next thing, towards the, the place that I want to land at. And so I, I think that that's really more of a balanced approach as opposed to, you know, I think some of the self-help books that are out there, although I think there's some really good nuggets there, I think it does tend to just focus on the consolations, just on the good, just on the gratitude, just on the successes, the wins. And I feel like that can be kind of flat in all honesty. Yeah. And I have found, so as all of you know, right, I've been playing around with this joie de vivre idea. And so all these little things, well, like having gratitude and feasting one's eyes and, oh, if I like the feeling of something on my skin, like maybe I should wear that material or whatever. <laughs> um, but they will only take you so far. Like in terms of raising your sense of joy, it's fractional. And so the more that I've played around with this idea, the more that I've realized if you don't deal with the suffering and the difficulty the, the actual joy cannot truly come. There's something about this. So I do, I think you're very astute in saying, oh yes, maybe these scriptures were moving us through or towards the fears. I think that's very helpful. I think in my life, I've appreciated uh, individuals that are positive um, because I, I find that I have negative emotions all the time or, you know, Christina said there, there are no positive, there are no negative emotions. They just are. And even, you know, labeling negative emotions, um, is, is probably unhelpful at this point, but emotions that society deems as negative. Uh, I think being around positive people, uh, a lot of times makes me want to, to like, okay, they're positive. Is it being around positive people, you almost want to be the antithesis of that and balance it out with some like <laughs> devil's advocate kind of energy? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but I want to I want to put it in, in a more healthy way. Okay. <laughs> sure. A story that comes up for me is I have a coworker that every morning he says, it's a beautiful day. And he really means it. Like, and he's a morning person. If you ask him how he is at four o'clock in the afternoon, he'll be, I'm tired. I need a nap, you know. Like there's a lot of sincerity to it, but like he just rubs people the wrong way in the morning. A lot of people, are you kidding? Like the, there's like three inches of snow on the ground right now. And we're supposed to get six more inches while we go drive our buses and pick up kids. How can you say it's a beautiful day? And you know, they just rub up against, 
his positive attitude and it forces these issues to come up in their life. You know, I, I think I, you know, being around overly positive people find myself wanting to play the devil's advocate at times. Like, really? Tell me, tell me more. Tell me everything's going great in your life. You know, there, there, there are no uh, negative emotions that are happening in you. There, I mean, it's only good. You're only climbing. You're only ascending. There's, there's no descent. There's no going down. I don't know whether that's helpful or not. I don't know whether that's uh, being a good friend or not. But there's just something in me that chafes when other people are are overly. Po- positive. And I, I really want to question them uh, and say, what about this experience that happened in your life? How are you dealing with that? If only I were as good at, you know, grilling myself <laughs> about my, my negative emotions as I am about grilling my friends. Um, but that's why we have community and that's why we have friends. So for sure. I, because again, this is ingrained. So I will always start with all the good things. And I occasionally I have one friend who will say, so nothing, like it's all positive. And I was like, well, no, right. There's, there's this and there's that, but I just wasn't talking about those things. So actually that prompting is, is good for a person like me because it brings me to a more authentic place which I I probably was hiding, but not intentionally. It just didn't seem like the type of thing to bring up, to to burden people with, or that's what I'm dealing with by myself type thing. Go ahead, ask the question. (laughs) Yeah, that's not a Facebook post, you know. Right. (laughs) (laughs) That's not, that's not the beautifully presented aspect of your life that you want, that you want to display. So even our social constructs are thumbs down on any, any sadness or anything that would cause anybody else to be sad or anybody else to be empathetic emotions that are, that are, that are good for us as human beings, compassion to have for one another. I've been helped by doing yoga and there's different types of yoga. There's yin yoga, which is more restorative. You're holding the poses longer. It's a deeper stretch. And then the flow classes, which I guess traditionally would be more of the yang energy, you know, high energy movement, warrior poses, strength, that sort of thing. And I think even thinking about, you know, toxic positivity, negativity, kind of these dichotomies that we have in our language and in the way that we address emotions versus like this, these energies and how, you know, more of the, the subdued, the inward, the, the deeper kind of things and the, um, the sunny, the outward, the energetic, the powerful. And even in those Eastern little symbols, whenever there's the yin and the yang symbol, there's always a dot in each. So maybe there's a primary, your primarily disposition is one towards um, the more yang energy, but there's always a dot of the yin and vice versa. And I like to think maybe in terms of that as opposed to the positive negative, but I think that there's invitation towards, yes, in general, I may have this sort of a disposition in life. And also it's important to always have that little speck of the grounding of the other energy um, to keep us balanced. And I think sometimes too, it flips where maybe in certain aspects of our lives or scenarios, we tend to be living in that other type of a yang or yin space as well. So I have found that yoga language or, you know, the yin yang to be a little bit helpful as well in thinking about this. Yeah. I also, right, because this was so foreign, I've needed people to walk me through a little bit okay, how am I going to process a negative emotion? (laughs) What is it? So when I would read these words about, and let the emotion pass through you, I was like, do what now? (laughs) How does one have an emotion pass through their body, which seems like a, you know, solid structure. Um, But having experienced it a few times, it's, it's a bit magical. I don't know how it happens, but there was a day when I was feeling all riled up about a conversation that I was having. And normally I would have gone to really talking that out for a long time with somebody who would be gracious enough to sit there with me through it. Um, But instead, I did this like deep breathing, may you be well experience over the course of like seven minutes. And somehow I didn't have any more emotion about it. It had truly passed through me. But if I'm just walking through my life and I say, just let an emotion pass through, I think I would still feel like, it's almost like the TV. I technically know the picture comes through a cable or something. I don't really understand it. So the emotion passed through, but I don't know how it happened. (laughs) Just that I did. 
I think that's I think that's a really good point that you bring up because what does that mean? And I think there are different ways for that to happen. So sometimes it is just the, the stillness and that you know the breath. Sometimes it is talking to someone. Like if you tend to be more of a person that that bottles things up and keeps things private, um, you know, we're I'm navigating this now with one of my children where um, we're really encouraging her to even if you have to write a letter and I can read that letter and she started with that and now is growing into be able to have more verbal communication about what's going on inside and giving permission that it's okay if you don't have all the right words or it feels a little messy, like just try your best and it it engages in conversation and it can help to get that out. Or maybe um, I was talking to someone the other day and when they're feeling emotion, they clean the kitchen. Like that is the way in which they release the frustration and the tension is like just going crazy at cleaning the kitchen and getting that energy out through the body that way and having some order in their life that helps bring a sense of groundedness. And then sometimes from there, then there's opportunity to maybe sit in that stillness because I've gotten that yang energy out, if you will, and the yin energy can can, can come in. Uh, I will also say, I think... Last week was the spiritual direction session that everybody got to experience um, between me and Chris. And um, that kind of an experience is a different sort of stillness, right? Where someone is asking a repetitive question, which that allows me to stop for a moment, really find, first of all, what was I really feeling? (laughs) And then what is some truth behind it? So sometimes we have this question of what is the truth And what is the story I'm telling myself? And different people call this differently, like necessary suffering, unnecessary suffering. Uh, But there tends to be a lot of this, the story I'm telling myself versus the story that is. So that moment for me to get still through someone else's really good questions can be very helpful. Well, thank you guys so much for talking about this. I feel like this is helpful and I feel like it will continue to be helpful even though we've already talked about some of these things in the past. There's always this little extra opening, so thank you. Uh, Now is the time in our podcast where we take a moment to chat about things that we're into today. So tell me, friends, what are you into? Well, I am into spring cleaning. I uh, felt really horrible last week. Uh, A couple of sleepless nights, a lot of pain, stuck on the couch. Um, And so I feel like I have a lot of energy. Um, And so this week I've cleaned out our garage, doing lots of sweeping. Uh, I even threw in some laundry this morning and I detailed, cleaned the bathroom. I had a daughter that woke up in the middle of the night with with a bloody nose and she was so out of it and so tired. I woke up this morning. I'm like, what happened? Did somebody did somebody die in her bathroom? And it's no, she just woke up because she she uh, didn't didn't sleep with her humidifier on and she got a bloody nose in the night. And there's so I. I got to clean out cracks and corners and and uh, and I had a lot of joy doing it. And normally joy while deep cleaning is, is not something that I experience. So yay for spring and cleaning. Great. Well, I am into the sdicompanions.org website. And this is just a wonderful resource. Um, Spiritual Directors International is the what the SDI stands for and have been engaging in some ongoing education with some of their webinars and resources. And it is just nourishing my soul in some beautiful ways. So that is what I am into this week. Woohoo! Uh, I think similar to Chris's, the weather has just been amazing. So I have been into opening every window in the house and letting that breeze come in. It has been wonderful. So that is me. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. If you are looking for more resources, please feel free to check out thecontemplativelife.net. Until then, have a great week, everybody. Mm-hmm.